Welcome to Job chapter 31, Job's Covenant. And now this is the last chapter of Job's response or his retort. It covered, I think, three or four uh, chapters. And it begins, I'll read a little in the Greek, and then we'll go through the English. The Athikin Ethamen, Tisaphthalmismu, Keu Siniso Epi Partheno, KT Emerison Otheos Anothen, K Kleronomia Ikanu ex Ipsi Stone. Job starts and says, I made a covenant with my eyes, and it wasn't with God, this covenant. Uh, to me, it reminds me of a New Year's resolution of sorts. Uh, I will not take notice upon a virgin. Uh, now, why he says that, if he has a problem looking at young women, I don't know. But uh, it's there. <laughs> you can gather whatever you'd like from that. Apparently, he uh, uh, was doing that or possibly felt he had a weakness there. I don't know. But it continues in verse 2. And what portion is from God above? And what fit inheritance is from the highest? Uh, here he's trying to determine what, the, what God wants. We can also ask the th- same thing. What, uh, what portion is from God above? And what fit inheritance is from the highest? What does God want? want from us? Well, Jesus uh, explains, tells about this many places in the New Testament. Basically, it's built around love. Verse 3, Ue, woe, destruction to the unjust and alienation to the one committing lawlessness. So he sets up uh, a parameter of if a person was committing lawlessness, be destruction and alienation, eventually being alienated from God. Now, he'll go in here to uh, a long, or I suppose you call it a litany of pleading his case. And he starts and he says, uh, it goes all the way to almost chapter 14, maybe even longer. Will he not see my way and count out all my footsteps? Yes, God does. But if I was going with jokesters, and even if hurrying my foot for treachery, and now we have these parenthetical uh, inserts that he says, for I stand uh, in a just yoke balance scale, and the Lord knew my innocence, and then he continues, and if... uh, my foot turned aside from out of the way, which it could, and if even my heart follows after my eye, whatever he sees uh, is what he goes after rather than good judgment, which many of us fall into. And even if my hands touched bribes, then may I sow and others eat. So, if he, I'm doing these things, basically he's not doing them. He's saying he's not doing them. If he was, then may this bad thing happen. Well, that's a dangerous thing to say because bad things did happen to him, and that's the argument of his friends. Then may I become rootless upon the earth, basically a wanderer. If my heart followed after the wife of another man, and if I had laid and wait at her doors, then may my wife please even another, and may my infants be humbled. If he was doing these things, that's what the uh, adulterer deserves, but apparently he's not an adulterer. So he's saying if, if. For the rage of anger is unrestrained in the defiling of a man's wife, adultery. For it is a fire burning upon all the parts, and whomever it may come upon, uh, it destroyed from out of the roots. And a man goes out, goes almost berserk if he finds his wife 
with another man. Sort of the bull moose syndrome, uh, the uh, bull moose, and he has all the cows and he controls them all. And if another male comes and he f- fights to the death. And humans have sort of the same bull moose attitude, at least the human males, of controlling the women. Well, today they don't in the United States with feminism coming in the 60s and women pretty much wanting to do what they want and doing whatever they want to do without men. And it's sort of a social mess today in the United States. Women, um, they're not having as many children in marriage as they used to, and all sorts of, all, all parts of our social structure is falling apart because of this. In verse 13, and if even I treat it as worthless, the equity due my male attendant, whatever he owed money to, or female attendant, in their pleading with me, what then shall I do if the Lord should appoint chastisement for me, and if also he should visit, what shall I make? Now, it's interesting here, I think, what if he should visit? And who is he? Well, I believe it's God. And he's thinking about if he should visit, what should I say? Well, Jesus uh, is God, and he did visit in verse 14 uh, when he was pointed out the temple and the large stones, and he wept over the city. And in uh, Luke 19, 44, he says, For shall come days upon you, that is Jerusalem, that your enemies shall put a siege mound around you and shall surround you and shall constrain you from all sides and shall dash you and your children with you and shall not leave among you a stone because you knew not the day of your visitation. Uh, in re- it's your, uh, the visitation of Christ, God coming and in 1 Peter 2.12, it talks about a day of visitation. And then in 15, it continues, Were they not as also I born in a womb and basically people? Uh, yeah, and we're all born in a womb, and these were born and we were born in the same belly. But the disabled miss not what need they had at some time or other. And I wasted not away the eye of the widow. So he's now uh, showing his cause of righteousness, of doing these things, of helping uh, people in different ways and widow and so forth. And even if I ate my morsel alone and I shared it not with an orphan, now here's another parenthetical station, a parenthetical sentence, For from out of my youth I nourished them as a father. So he didn't do these things. And from out of the womb of my mother I guided. And even if I overlooked the naked perishing and clothed him not, and uh, the disabled, unless they bless me, and of the shearing wool of my lambs, their shoulders were not heeded. And if I lifted up a hand against an orphan, Again, a parenthetical statement, relying that much help remain to me, may then uh, may then my shoulder separate from the collarbone, and may my arm be broken from the elbow. So basically, all these things he's saying: if I did these things, then let these bad things happen to me. For the fear of the Lord constrained me. From his concern, I shall not endure. If I ordered up gold from my strength, and if even I relied upon very costly stone, and even if great gladness and riches was coming to me, and if also I put my hand upon innumerable things, and then the end, parenthetical, Or should we not see the sun shining, subsiding, and the moon waning? There is, for there is not a power to them. And if my heart was deceived in private, and if I was fond of placing 
my hand upon my mouth, then may this be imputed to me as the greatest lawlessness. For I lied before the Lord of the highest if he did that. And even if I became gratified at the calamitous downfall of my enemies and said in my heart, well, good, well done, for then my ear to hear my curse, then may I then be a common topic by my people for my inflicting evil. And if even often my female attendant said, well, whoever might give to us his flesh to satisfy, that take advantage of him, that exceedingly of my being gracious, but the stranger lodged not outside. And so he's basically that these things didn't. He is gracious. And the stranger didn't lodge outside. He took him in. But my door was open to all coming. So now he's showing he wasn't like that. And even if of sins unintentionally, I hid my sin. Again, the parentheses. For not was I diverted by a great multitude to not openly declare before them. And if even I allowed a disabled one to go forth from my door with an empty bosom, oh, that there might be given one to hear me. But unless I was in awe of the hand of the Lord, and as to a writ which I had against anyone, a debt that they had to him, putting it on a crown, even uh, upon even my shoulders, I read it. And unless tearing it, I gave it back, having received nothing from a debtor. Didn't get paid, but he gave it, let him off. If perhaps the earth moaned against me, and even if her furrows wept with one accord, and even if of its strength I ate alone without value, and if even in taking anything of the life of the master of the land I fretted him, then instead of wheat, then may come may there come forth to me nettles, and instead of barley, a bush. So, and Job ceased words. Uh, all these things he says in response uh, to the retort of the things that these four three men were saying. In the next chapter, though, Elihu uh, comes uh, in the scene, and he has his opinion. And we'll go into who this Elihu who he is and so forth in our next video seminar. Hope you'll join us. And until then, God bless.